I saw on the news the other day, a guy found out he only had a few months to live. So he sold everything he had and went on a party binge. A couple months later, he found out the hospital had made a mistake. So you would think, if that happened, you would be so joyful that you were going to live. But no, instead he turns around and sues the hospital. You know, I got a comment on this, you know. Um, you never really know, you know, when, when you're going to die, you know. And you never really know, you know, when Jesus is coming back. Jesus could come back at any moment, any time, you know. And and the Bible is real clear on that, you know. The Bible says, you know, in Matthew 24, 36, it says, this is what it says about the end times and when Jesus is coming back. It says, no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah's, so it and the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, and the other left. Two women will be grinding with the hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming. He would have kept watch and would have not. Would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready. Because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. <clears throat> so I just want to say that Jesus' return is going to come. And not only that, but like I said before, you do not even know when you might die. You could die tonight in a car accident. You could die anywhere you go. You could have a heart murmur right now and die. Um, I also want to tell a little story, you know. This guy took everything he had and went out and celebrated, you know. And, you know, personally me, I'm not going to badmouth him. But if this was me and I just found out that I was going to die, I would, this is, this is what I would be trying to do, which would be going out and trying to show some love for people. Now, if we check what the Bible says in Isaiah 58, 6, Jesus says, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and unite and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter When you see the naked to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. There's a story Jesus told here in Luke uh, 16, 19. It says there was a rich man who, uh, who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in hell where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father, Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, 
between us and you a great chasm has been fixed and that so that those who want to go from here to you cannot nor can anyone cross over from here to us he answered then I beg you father send Lazarus to my father's house for I have five brothers let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment Abraham replied they have Moses and the prophets let them listen to them no father Abraham he said but if someone from the dead goes to them they will repent he said to them if they did not listen to Moses and the prophets they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead even if someone rises from the dead he says 2007 years ago somebody did rise from the dead his name was Jesus Christ he was the Son of God. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Some Bibles word it eternal life. You know, I'm thankful for that, and I'm thankful that my Jesus died on the cross for me, because I, I am not a good person. I'm not a perfect person. I've made many mistakes in my life. I don't claim to be perfect, nor do I look for any man on this planet to be perfect, because I know all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But what I am ministering is love, the love of Christ, the fact that He died on the cross for you and me. And if I only have one day left to live, in fact, you know what? I don't even know when I'm going to die. It could be tonight. So right now, I'm taking the time to share that with you. You can believe it or not. It's up to you. But I know that God died. God sent His Son to die for you. So if you just ask for your forgiveness, your sins could be forgiven. We could start from right there and go on from there. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.